Hello and welcome in to another edition of the Tech in 10 post game show from the Ruston Daily Leader. I am sports reporter Matt Bellinson coming to you after another loss for the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. This time they fall 26 21 to the Charlotte 49ers. Uh, the Bulldogs end the season 0 and 7 on the road. They are now 3 and 8 and 2 and 5 in Conference USA. Um, you know, I feel like before we get into the nitty gritty here, I think big picture, I feel like I've come on these post game shows and have pretty much given the same recap, maybe three or four times this year, probably more than that. The Bulldogs just for whatever reason cannot execute the basic things on the road. Um, it's startling. I don't really have an answer for it. Sonny Cumby clearly doesn't have an answer for it. Uh, and we'll get to his quotes, um, very glaring quotes here in a second. Um, but man, this, this, I feel like this is a, this is a special tech in 10. Um, even though I'm saying the message is pretty much going to be the same. Um, I feel like tonight losing to Charlotte, the way the Bulldogs did, um, I think it, it opens up a bigger picture discussion about, where is this program and where where is the direction going? Um, you know, obviously, Sonny Combi, you know, officially not even a year um, into his uh, head coaching tenure for the Bulldogs. But, um, you know, I don't I don't know if anyone expected a three and eight season. Um, you know, you a bowl game was probably the, the loftiest goal you were going to throw on this team um, that was thrown out of the picture, you know, late October for this group. Um and now, now you're sitting at a 3-8 record um, where, again, the same message has been delivered multiple times to this group. That I means Sonny Cumbie called this group, you know, they're not mentally tough on the road. Those are his words, not mine, um, including Trey Harris and Mackie Carabin. You know, they both said, you know, they are a mentally weak football team uh, when they go on the road, um, you know. And when I asked Sonny Cumbie post game again after another loss um, to the nation's worst, second worst defense, by the way, in Charlotte, um, where the Bulldogs uh, actually scored the fewest points that the worst defense um, in the country has allowed all season and 21 points. They uh, only scored seven points in the first half. Um, I asked Sonny Cumbie afterward, you know, was he was he surprised to see his group after hearing the message again? You got to come out with some pride, effort intensity, all the other buzzwords you want to use. Was he surprised to see that given the messaging? And this is his direct quote after the game. Uh, I don't think I was surprised just because up to this point, one of the things we've talked about is taking responsibility. We can dodge our responsibilities and you look at it a whole bunch of different ways from a player, from a coach, from a husband, a father, all those things. We can dodge our responsibilities all we want but we can't. But what we can't do is dodge the consequences of dodging our responsibilities. At some point, we've got to take responsibility internally and externally. Um, you know, pretty stark words uh, from a coach who, throughout the course of the season, has stayed pretty measured. Um, you know, obviously, there's been some frustrating losses, and he's definitely called out, you know, his team for their effort and wants to see, you know, some responses after some of these losses. Tonight, I think, was the first time. He truly laid it out on the table and said, there are players in this program and coaches that are not giving 100% effort that are, as he said, he, you know, according to him, dodging responsibilities. Um, I think that was the first time he was so cut and dry with that fact. You know, I think when you, when you sit three and eight, um, clearly something internally is not working. People aren't being held accountable um, you know, with the record like that. So um, I think it's interesting that at this point in the season, Cumbie has pretty much taken the gloves off, you know, gotten rid of the coach speak and said, yeah, there are people in this program that aren't taking responsibility for their basic jobs, um, which I think if you're looking at it from a fan's perspective, obviously you don't want to sit with the record you're at now. But, um, you know, I think I kind of like that if, if you're a fan uh, of Louisiana Tech, you know, um, as a first-year head coach, you've got to set a standard. You've got to set a culture from the moment you walk into the building. Um, and I think it's been pretty clear um, with not only this post game but throughout the season um, that Coach Cumbie has had issues finding a collection of players and coaches that have bought in. You know, he certainly has found individual players: Parker McNeil, Landry Liddy, Trey Harris. Um, you know, on defense, you know th those names are pretty spotty. Um, 
but overall, the team, the team as a collective, um, has not bought into what this coaching staff and what Cumbie um, have continued to press on them. You got to come out and execute from the from the rip. Um, you know, Coach Cumbie said it after the game. You know, for some reason, Louisiana Tech keeps expecting um, that they'll just wait for a big moment and and they'll wait to come back. I mean, no, you got to come out and play from the very beginning with with the level of intensity required to win. Um, and as I mentioned tonight, you know, obviously the score, you know, reflects that it was pretty close. The game was not close for a majority of the night. Um, Louisiana Tech struggled offensively. I guess, like I mentioned, the second worst defensive unit in the country by all statistical categories. They had seven points at halftime um, against the second worst defense in the nation that gives up 41 points on average and 496 yards per game. Um, and I, like I mentioned, uh, the 21 points that Louisiana Tech scored tonight are the fewest that the second worst defense in the country has, a, has allowed all season. Um, and Charlotte gave, has given up the most touchdowns in the country coming in at 59. Um, and you managed seven points in the first half and 21 for the game. Um, you know, the passing attack was not there tonight. Landry Liddy, this was probably his worst game uh, as a Bulldog. Uh, which, you know, I don't know if you can blame him a whole lot. Obviously, he is a college quarterback at this point. He is your starter. He's required to, you know, as Coach Gumby said, take responsibility for the role that he has on this team now. He is this team's starter and will start next week at UA- against UAB. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the kid doesn't even have six starts under his belt in college. Um, you know, again, I'm not going to make excuses for him. The two, he had two bad interceptions tonight. Um, one inside the red zone at the three-yard line on some vague attempt at a screen uh, that he decided to loft, you know, right in front of the defender. Uh, the defender made a nice play on it, but um, even so, just bad interceptions tonight, you know, a couple downfield shots, um, but really other than that, uh, the passing game was just not there, um, and I think if you're Sonny Cumbie in this team with one game left, you know, I, I think it's good to see Liddy at least getting this game experience. You know, I think going into next year, you know, I guess we'll see what happens, but you would think Liddy is going to be your starter. Um, and I think it's good to at least let him live through this, let him work it out, um, and let him see how to command an offense like this. You know, I think if you went into next year, a clean slate, he's never played in this offense before, um, then you're already starting behind the eight ball. Then you're, then you start the year, your first three games or so, uh, then he's really struggling. Then you're already, you know, possibly 0 and 3, 1 and 2 to start the year. Um, in a season where you really need to bounce back. Um, I think it's good to see him, you know, he goes through his lumps, you know, makes some throws when he needs to, um, to get this out of the way now where, where hopefully you go into next year um, and he's much more confident, he's much more precise with his passes, and he's leading this offense in the direction that it needs to go. Um, you know, like I mentioned, taking responsibility, at, you know, starting quarterback, freshman or not, it's your responsibility to lead uh, your team down and score points. Um, and the passing game was not there whatsoever tonight um, against, again, like I mentioned, I can't stress it enough, the second worst defense in the entire country. Um, Louisiana Tech scored 21 points. Um, and to kind of cap off the discussion here, um, you know, I think in big picture, Louisiana Tech is now 0-7 on the road this year um, and will continue to carry over its road losing streak into next season. Um, that'll be going into three years now without a road win for Louisiana Tech. Their, uh, its last road win was December 3rd of 2020 against North Texas. Um, 14 games in a row Louisiana Tech has lost on the road. Um, it's it's baffling to see. You know, I've never seen a team night and day struggle this much on the road compared to at home. I mean, obviously Louisiana Tech has had its struggles at home, but it's found some wins um, this season against Stephen F. Austin, uh, Middle Tennessee, and then obviously UTEP um, for the only wins of the year. But I mean, other than that, the road is just, it's just a completely different team. There's no execution, sloppy penalties, you know, people can't even get lined up correctly. Um, and even, you know, situational football is missing. I mean, Louisiana Tech gets the ball back with 8 minutes and 35 seconds left after a defensive stand with a chance you can go down and take the lead. And then, it, oh, a 3 and out, 2 play, two yards, 3 and out, 2 yards, punt it away, uh, and then middle, and then uh, Charlotte uh, eventually scores again. Um, 
just a lack of effort, um, lack of execution once again from Louisiana Tech on the road. Um, and again, I, I I was very taken aback by Sonny Cumbie's post game words. You know, again, like I said, throughout the season he's been pretty measured in how he's evaluated this team. He's obviously been frustrated at times. He certainly was frustrated again tonight. But I think this loss was truly the first time he put all the cards on the table and said, "Bottom line is, I came here to fix." frankly a rotten program this program had fallen off from where it had been in previous years the culture inside that building is the problem and for whatever reason people are not responding to the responsibilities given to them under this new coaching staff um, and obviously with one game left you know all you can do is win uh, next saturday against uab and hope that um Hope that you can go into the offseason with some sort of optimism uh, because right now, you know, the bottom seems to keep going further and further for this team. So um, it'll be interesting to see once again. I feel like this, this is how we always end these videos. It'll be interesting to see how Louisiana Tech can respond next week in their final game of the season versus UAB after, again, Coach Cumby has called them out directly. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's where we pretty much leave it for tonight, you know, Apologies for going a little bit longer here, but I feel like it was warranted uh, just based on how the Bulldogs played tonight and and where this season has really uh, taken a nosedive. So, uh, but that's going to do it for us tonight on the Tech in Ten post game show for Matt Bellinson and the Rustin Daily Leader. Thank you all for listening. Have a good one.